Jason Asano regained consciousness surrounded by a fiery, transcendent energy. It burned without heat. He could feel its otherworldly power, but it left him wholly unharmed. It vanished, and he dropped to the cold, hard floor. The feel of chilly tiles under his body told him that he was naked. For some reason, he was surprised it wasn't grass, and his mind went back to the last time he had woken up disoriented and naked. He had just been thrown between worlds, his body feeling strange, having just been remade out of magic. He had the same sensation now. Memories came in flashes, falling from a tower, pain, anger, triumph, death. He'd been fighting the Builder, a futile endeavour as his powers had no effect. The Builder caught him, chained him to parade in front of his team. The godlike being was like the deities of Greek myth, prideful, petty, and vain, lording it over mortals. It had given Jason a critical chance. He'd launched them both out of the Builder's Tower in a desperate attempt to buy his team time. He didn't know if it had worked, if they had put an end to the Builder's plan and, hopefully, gotten out alive. The last thing he remembered was falling, stone spikes of the Builder's rage spearing into his body. The mad whirl as he plunged through the air, darkness taking him before he hit the ground. Then he woke up, wherever he was now. His brain told him it had only been moments since he fell from the tower, but his soul told him otherwise. It carried an echo of some encounter that his brain had no memory of. It was not the first time Jason had experienced that dissonance. The fight with the Builder for the fate of his soul, when Jason's body had already been claimed by a starseed, was the same. Like waking from a dream, he felt the memories that should be there, yet were outside of his reach. The closest he had to recollection was a sense of travelling, and not travelling alone. His eyes were still closed as he lay on the cold, damp floor, but his magical senses told him that there was no one else in the building, let alone the room, his aura senses picked out rats and insects, quite a lot of them, but no people. He opened his eyes and pushed himself into a sitting position. There were a bunch of system windows open in front of him, but he shoved them out of the way. They shrank into the periphery of his vision, and he looked himself over, confirming that he was naked. The impaling wounds on his chest were gone, although scars had been left in their place. One was at the base of his throat, where a high shirt would just cover it, if he'd been wearing one. The marks seemed long-heeled, and were far from his first permanent reminders of battles past. Most had come courtesy of the Builder. His whole torso was pocked with scars from where fragments of starseed had been pushed from his body. They were added to by new marks from where the Builder impaled him multiple times, although the largest one was still his first the wide scar running up from his right hip, across his abdomen and around his left side, was one the Builder had nothing to do with. At least it fit the theme of enemies no sane person would fight. As he checked his torso, he realised his chest hair was also gone. He ran his hands over his bald head, groaning as he discovered it to have callously abandoned him once more. Again? he complained to the empty room. It's my best feature. Jason turned his attention to the room around him. There was no window to let in light, but his very first magic power had been to see through darkness. The room was large and empty, the tiled floor and plastered wall both heavily cracked. The air was stale and clammy, with a taste of unhealthy growth on the air, like fungus or mould. It was clearly an abandoned building. There was a broken fluorescent light on the ceiling and a pair of double doors that made him think school or maybe hospital. He jolted as he realised it was the architecture of his own earth, not the magical alternate version into which he'd been thrown into. He pushed his senses past the lingering remnants of the potent magic that had dumped him wherever he was. Beyond it, the magic was weaker than anything he'd felt even in low magic greenstone. It was at a level one would expect from a world where true magic was unknown. 
He sensed nothing but non-magical auras from the animals scurrying through the abandoned facility. 